Welcome to EQS Electric, my channel about my Mercedes EQS 450 Plus in the AMG design. Today we are talking about the matrix light and the digital light of that car, which comes standard. In the EQE, the smaller brother or the smaller cousin of the EQS, this digital light is not standard and you might buy it for 2100 euros or 2200 dollars. Quite a lot, but cheaper than the Xenon lights uh, I had in my BMW, for example, before. The first car of my father, a VW Beetle, a Volkswagen Käfer. I show you a picture of a friend of mine who he owns one of those from the mid 1950s had a six volt light system. This was not really a light system, it was a little bit more than candles and it was a pre-war design by the engineer Porsche. The next Volkswagen of my father came with a 12 volt system. This was already a little bit brighter and both cars had light bulbs, big light bulbs with two uh, different glow coils, which give a low beam and a high beam. In the US, um, there had been those sealed beams where you always had four in front of the car. The outside ones had been the low beams and the inner ones had been the high beams. And the high beam at the Kefir, the Beetle, was activated by your left foot. Yeah, <laughs> very weird. My first own car had been a Datsun 100A. Uh, a company called today Nissan and it came with these big light bulbs as well. The light had been a little bit better because the mirror surfaces had been better in those years. But my second car I had a Mitsubishi came with a halogen lights and those were smaller cylindrical light bulbs with two coils in it as well and they burned hotter and the light was therefore brighter. A big gap to my first Tesla in 2013. It came with Xenon headlights and they were quite bright, but not as good as the Xenon light of the Toyota Avensis station wagon we had to that time as a second car and they had close to perfect lights and they had curved lights as well. We come to that with the Mercedes in a few seconds. My Tesla Model S 100D, the last Model S I had before this EQS, came with LED lights and a sort of curve lights, which wasn't very aggressive, the wrong word, very light and visible. Uh, and they had cornering lights as well. The cornering lights were the fog lights activated by the flasher and the curve lights had been, well, three separate beams on each side in each headlight unit and they were activated to increase the, the angle of the light into the curve you're following. But there are LED lights in the cars today which follow the turning roads and this is done mechanically with an electric dive in it and they move the LED, uh, the LEDs inside the reflector and there are separate systems which move the complete reflector and with the Tesla 100D uh, the system was fixed and there were different LEDs activated in the system. Sometimes this function is called adaptive light if the beam moves proportionally to your turning of the steering wheel with the road. This helps because there won't be any dark spots in sharp turning roads and it avoids uh, blinding upcoming traffic or pedestrians coming against you. This adaptive light to the curves is not new. It was invented in 1918 and the first mass-produced system came with Citroen with a DS system, the DS car, and they started the mass production in 1968. Before we start with the details and the videos I took at night, uh, we have to define several different parts of the headlights. First, active curve light. Headlights follow your motion on the steering wheel and relevant parts of the street ahead 
are illuminated. Second, cornering light. It's active below 40 km per hour or 25 miles per hour and it's activated by the flasher. Or at 40 to 70 km per hour up to 45 miles per hour and turning with a wheel. Third, the circle or roundabout light. Both cornering lights, left and right, are activated if the data from the nav system indicates a roundabout. They cease operation after leaving the circle and uh, they are very interesting, those cornering lights, because there are no separate lights but separate mirrors beside the matrix light unit you will see uh, in a few minutes when I show you the details of the light unit itself. Then fourth, the Autobahn light, and that increases the reach of the light on Autobahn and highways. The system switches to Autobahn light if the NAV system or the multifunction camera uh, recognizes an Autobahn and it does not work at speeds lower than 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour. Fifth is the enhanced fog light. The light is distributed broader on your part of the road, on your lane, and you are able to see the edges of the road a lot better. And the glare of the fog is reduced. It is activated automatically at speeds lower than 70 km per hour or 45 miles per hour and activated with a rear fog light. There is no longer a, a switch for the front fog light. It comes up automatically if you switch on the back fog light. It will be deactivated reaching speeds of 100 km per hour or 60 miles per hour or if you switch off the rear fog light and that is really good because very often people forget this fog light and if you're speeding then there might be no fog yeah. <laughs> or you're on the way uh, yeah, to an accident. Sixth bad weather light reduces the reflection on wet roads by dimming special parts of the light beam that's done via the matrix light uh, system. Seven, city light. It increases the spread of the light to the sides of your lane in cities. It only works if you drive slower and the road is illuminated by street lights inside towns. All these different scenarios are run by the high and low beam units and the matrix light. So this is, these are those three units of, from the uh, headlight unit which work. And the next is the assistant light, the digital light, which you have to order with the EQE separately, which should be coming with all the EQS cars. The assistant light, the digital light projects spotlights, warnings and alerts in front of the car on the road. So there's a projector in the headlight unit which projects a sign on the road which you then can see from yeah, your position behind the steering wheel. And it's not a head-up display which I have as well in the car. No, it's projected on the street and you're able to see it from outside the car as well. These signs may be disturbing, so you can switch it off if you want. The main menu of the MBUX system lets you define which light you want to activate. And I switched everything on that was available. And the menu has three main parts, digital light, interior and exterior light, where you illuminate the surrounding of the car and the ambient light as the third part of this menu, which I showed in a video some weeks ago. In the digital light menu, you may activate the dynamic low beam, that's the matrix light, the moving star projection, if you open and close the car, the supporting projections means the original digital light and you can switch the low beam to right side or left side traffic and there's as well an automatic setting for letting the car decide uh, where you drive. I think this goes via the GPS system. The supporting projections have an own menu. It gives you the possibility to switch on spotlight, warnings and alerts. 
These projections are done by the two projectors in the headlights. Spotlight indicates barely visible persons outside towns. I was on the road close to my company, whiskey.com, the internet portal for the whiskey connoisseur at Lake Starnberg in southern Bavaria in Germany. And that after 10 p.m. and we live in the countryside and there's no pedestrian outside at that time of the day. So I have no example for that. Warnings appear if you drive too fast, reaching stop signs or red traffic lights, or you enter the wrong ramp on the autobahn. Very necessary, give you an alert on the street, directly in the view of your light. Or you try to change lane on autobahns and there is a car in the blind spot. There's also a warning if you drive too close to a car in front of you. But that's given as well in the head-up display. It's given with the ambient light and yeah, those are redundant, redundant, redundant systems. The most functional part of this dynamic light is the illumination part during passes through construction works. There's a carpet of light in front of you and giving two dark well, lines on the left and the right of this uh, highlighted part. And this highlighted part, this carpet in front of the car, is the size, exactly the size of your car. So that you can center the lane by looking at this carpet and turning your wheel so that the distances to the left and right markers are exactly. You can only uh, imagine how good that works if you're really in the car, if you see it in practice. It's so fantastic, wonderful. In daylight, you're able to have your back mirrors and uh, control how far you're away from the left and the right markings on the road. So in daylight, you're doing this by the back mirrors. At night, you won't see there anything in the mirrors. The car should, of course, center itself inside the lane at day and at night by the lane assistant, but in construction in roadworks, it doesn't really work that well. Now I have a look at the headlight unit itself. The EQS has a lot of different lights mounted in those units on the left and right hand side of the car. And the first is with the digital projectors, the welcoming projection after opening the car. And these are those stars rising up or rising rising down no going down and then there's the horizontal moving light spots when switching on the headlights and that's done i think with the matrix lights third there are position lights and daytime running light daytime running light is the eyebrow uh, above the unit and the position lights are three single lights between the single the separate units of the headlights. I think eyebrow lights and the position lights always work and run together. There are two separate sections behind the headlight glass, separated and framed by these three simple low-powered but extremely good-looking LEDs of the position lights. In the outside compartment, the low beam and part of the high beam up to 300 meters, 330 yards, and there is no laser light which might reach 600 meters. Uh, Mercedes discusses this, that the laser light units cost five times more than the normal light. And there's a very rare occasion that you can, may use light up to 600 meters. In the lower inner part of the unit is the multi-beam unit with the 84 single LEDs. They are used to illuminate the complete area in front of the car. Not that far as the high beam, but at least 60 to 80 meters, 200 to 250 feet. Extremely bright. The device can turn off rectangular areas in front of the car to avoid the glare of other cars or pedestrians. These work multiple rectangulars on multiple cars and uh, rectangulars around street signs. They would reflect too much of light that you couldn't read them. So this unit is <laughs> multi-tracking light fighter jets which can act on multiple targets in the same second. And above that matrix light uh, segment or unit uh, you find the projection lenses of the digital light. It is indicated by those writings with the blue color 
and three high power LEDs are in each unit on both sides. And each unit has a 1.3 million mirror system in the lighting. And those mirrors are switchable, turnable, so that the light going on these, coming on these mirrors are reflected off and not to the street. With this, you can, well, you can direct or pro project a, a picture on the street. The system is, well, we have seen those in former beamers or the first beamers with very high power beams for large audiences. There you had these mirror systems as well. And they are called digital micro mirror devices, DMDs. In addition, there's a spatial light modulator, SLM, which controls the intensity of the light. In theory, you're able to watch black and white videos on your garage wall, which you want to, with a resolution of 2.6 megapixels. The start sequence you're seeing here lacks a little bit of focus because I stood too close to the wall. There's a projection lens in that system and I don't know uh, on which distance this projection lens is focused. I think uh, it is where these signs are projected, no, it has to be on the distance where these signs are projected on the street. There are more functions to the lights according to the manual. Everything works completely automatically, but I have some complaints. Not many, but some or a few. The construction site warning appears far too late and the arrows during lane changes help close to nothing. Well, 80 to 90% of the time, um, those lane changes won't work automatically and the assistant won't work. So showing the arrow gives a feedback without looking on the dials. The system should also be able to give you directions from the nav system, but there is nothing. The combination of high power LEDs, adaptive matrix light with cornering mirrors and the digital projection on the street is, is a real gem. Never thought that light could be that good, that bright, that complete, that equal on every part of the road. Compared with the old bulby cars or lamps in the cars, driving today is like driving <laughs> in the daytime in former times. It's highly, highly recommended. Is the digital light, the assistant light, really necessary? In the moment, I just get three functions out of it, the roadwork sign, the arrows during line change, and the lighted carpet for centering during the or inside narrow construction sites. And well, the digital light came with a car. I had no chance to vote off that extra, but buying this new feature for $2,200 or 2,100 euros in an EQE, okay, it's just 2% of the price or 3% of the price, but I doubt that it will pay you off. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come. <music>